Wow, wow, wow. How uh, how are you feeling, John? The last time we talked, I mean Well, uh things have gotten a little bit worse since the last time we talked. Uh, like I said, uh at that time I was working on my fourth cancer, now I'm working on my fifth. So that's that's what that's uh, what I was thinking and I apologize that I, I, I didn't recall, but I thought I thought you know, that that was one John, more. That that John, was one more. I I got to get you hooked up with Sherry Edwards. I really do. She's, okay. She, she's helped you out. She's helped out a lot of people with Agent Orange. Yeah, well, um, I've got my disability for it, but uh, you know what can I say? I'd rather have my health than all that money. Yeah. 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 Wise words. Any day. Yeah. If they had a way to give me back my health, they can have it all back. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I hear you there. Wow, so, well, so I'm not I'm not the only one involved in all this stuff, you know. There's there's thousands of other guys out there are worse shape than I am. At least ways thousands. I'm not pushing daisies yeah. yet. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. I've heard still, still putting up first fight. horrible stuff. Oh yeah, they they just keep coming in. So, I mean, is there is there anything positive on the uh, on the horizon? Any any potential good news? Well, yeah, for uh, there there's some good stuff coming around. Uh, uh, we've got some good people working working for us. Uh, I don't know if you know him uh, or not, the uh, commander uh, uh, John Wells. Uh, he's a retired Navy commander. And, and an attorney, he's back and forth to Washington, D.C. all the time. Uh, he's uh, He represents the Blue Water Navy Association. Uh, and the head of that association is John Rossi. He lives out in Colorado, and he's uh, probably in worse shape than I am. Uh, John Rossi is anyway. Uh, Commander Wells, uh, He's he's been... Uh, He's been hoofing it back and forth to uh, D.C., talking to senators and congressmen, and uh, and also to the uh, uh, CBO reps. Uh, the CBO, that's the uh, Congressional uh, Budget Office, uh, trying to get some figures together that would be acceptable to Congress and to the Senate uh, in order to pass a bill. Uh, we've been making a little bit of progress so far. Uh, how much further it will go, we we don't know. Uh, things are still up in the air. Uh, a good positive thing is we now have two new bills uh, again. Uh, the last ones, of course, have died over the past four years. Uh, we've got uh, a House bill and a Senate bill. A uh, House bill is uh, H.R. 969. Or uh, yeah, yeah, nine six nine, and uh, the Senate bill is S six eight one. Both of those bills are titled uh, the uh, Blue Water Navy Vietnam Veterans Agent Orange Act. Um, uh, the uh, Senate bill is piggybacking the uh, uh, House bill. Okay. And uh, uh, presently, uh, uh, we have approx- we have uh, 218 congressmen on board with the House bill, and I believe we have uh, eight senators on board with the uh, Senate bill. Uh, the reason why we don't have a lot of senators on board is they're waiting for the CBO. Uh, that's the budget. And once the budget comes about, once the uh, 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 budget office uh, assigns a dollar number, then uh, we'll see how many senators come on board. Mm-hmm. Uh, last time, the last bill that was in the House, and that one failed. That was uh, H.R. 543, and uh, and it failed last year um, because of the money. It's all about the dollar bill. It's not about the veteran. It's about the, it's about the doggone money. And uh, I always say, what's a veteran's life worth? Uh, is it worth a dollar or is it worth a million dollars? I don't know. You tell me. Uh, but anyway, 
the last time the CBO uh, uh, score, what they call a score, uh, which is a dollar dollar figure, was uh, $2.74 billion to take care of uh, Vietnam veterans who, were, who are known as Blue Water Navy. Uh, Blue Water Navy uh, represents sailors who were never on land but only at sea within the 12-mile limit of Vietnam who still came down with Agent Orange infection, and uh, of which the VA likes to deny that fact. I see. So this, so this bill is specific for that. Yeah, well, the uh, Institute of Medicine, better known as the IOM, has proven differently, but still in all, the VA uh, continues to deny the facts. Sure. Uh, And and like I say, and and it was as far as uh, Congress goes, it's all about the money. Oh, well, two point seven four billion dollars was considered too much money spread out over roughly eight years or so. Uh, in eight years, none of us will be left to worry about anyway. Uh, I'm 79 years old. I'm one of the oldest known Vietnam veterans still living. And I sometimes ask myself every day why. Uh, but uh, I think the man upstairs has got something in store for me, such as completing this mission I am on. Yeah. There you go. Uh, and, uh, but the... Uh, uh, what uh, John Wells is trying to do is to bring that figure down to maybe $1 billion or less. And, and if that can happen, then uh, uh, just maybe the Congress will pass the bill and perhaps the Senate will come on board and pass their bill as well. Uh, now, see, what you have to know about uh, about dollars and cents when it comes to uh, Congress and the Senate especially to Congress, is that uh, once a CBO score, what they call a score, which is nothing more than dollars, uh, once that is set and it's carved in stone and they pass a bill, uh, it doesn't matter what the, what the dollar could be. It could be one dollar or it could be a billion dollars. Uh, once the bill is passed, then they are, uh, they are committed to continue uh, affording benefits that cost money. And all the VA then has to do is say we need more money, and the Congress must give it to them. Mm -hmm. Uh, So it doesn't matter uh, what the score is, what the CBO score uh, comes out to be. Uh, uh, When they say they need more money, they are given more money, uh, regardless of the original uh, the original dollar figure. So, uh, so, so it doesn't matter whether we get approved for a billion dollars or one dollar. It doesn't make a it doesn't make a hill of beans. The big thing is is to have the bill passed. Right. And that's that's uh, uh, once it's passed, then it becomes law, and then the VA must uh, uh, go along with that law, and. Uh, and if the VA goes to the goes to Congress and say, "Hey, uh, one dollar isn't enough. We need uh, we need uh, you know a billion dollars." Well, then Congress has to give it to them in order to keep the law moving, so that the benefits can be can be awarded accordingly. That's it in a nutshell. Uh, there's more complications than that, but. But that's about the uh, long and short of it in a, uh, in a nutshell, so uh, perhaps the people can better understand of how it works. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. we have, uh, like I said, uh, uh, we got the two House bills, H.R. 969 and the Senate Bill 681. Uh, both bills are titled the Blue Water Navy Vietnam Veterans Agent Orange Act. Uh, and uh, both of these bills were introduced in March of 2015 and uh, 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 to their respective uh, VA legislative committees. Um, uh, both the House and the Senate each have their own legislative committee uh, that works with the VA. So uh, uh, it wouldn't matter which one of these bills get passed. Uh, it's immaterial in, in, in uh, some respect. 
we prefer that the House bill gets passed. Because if the House bill gets passed, chances are the Senate will approve it, and then the president will then go ahead and sign it into law. Uh, quick, and, uh, quick question for you, John. Go ahead. Um, for for any of our listeners, any of the any of the listeners that uh, you know feel moved and and want to want to do something and help, what can they do? I mean, calling the senators, or, um, okay, you know, emails okay. and, and whatnot. What 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 can people do? All right, what the listeners can do, what the American people as a whole can do, really, is to call their congressman, their district congressman. In their, in uh, wherever they live, they they can look up their district congressman very easily in the phone book. Uh, they can give him a telephone call and ask the congressman to uh, uh, to please. They have to be nice, of course, to please uh, uh, co-sponsor the House bill, which is HR 969, and uh, that's all they need to ask their congressman. And the best way to call them would be their D.C. office. They, sometimes if they call their local office uh, in their district, not all the time does the word get to the congressman. Okay. But if they call the D.C. office, then the word will uh, – more chances of him getting that information from, from their constituents. Uh, and they can, look, they can look up that phone number online under their congressman's name and get the D.C. office. Sure. The other thing they want to do as well is also write him a letter, a nice letter, uh, asking him to him or her uh, to support the House bill and uh, and name the House bill, which is HR 969. They'll know what that is. Mm-hmm. Likewise with the Senate, call their senator, and the best place to call them is also the D.C. office. Though so they can call the home office if they so please. Uh, usually it's a toll-free number by calling the D.C. office. Okay. And uh, uh, and all they have to do is ask that senator. The, they won't get to talk to the senator or the congressman, but uh, they will talk to an aide. Sure. And, uh, and all they have to do is refer the same thing on to the senator uh, to pass the Senate bill, which is S-681. And, uh, and that word will get to them much more quicker that way than um, than as if they called the local office, but either way will 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 be a big help. And uh, and the phone call should be followed up with a handwritten letter. Uh, senators and congressmen like handwritten letters, and uh, and it doesn't have to be anything long and drawn out. Just something brief, short and sweet, you know, to uh, uh, to work on the bills, to become co-sponsors. To support so, the bills, so, and so you support. Yeah. this is what we need, and we need the. Uh, without the American people, nothing's going to happen. So we need the American people to do this. This puts pressure on, and and the more people that respond, uh, the better our chances are in getting these bills uh, out of the committee, and sent to the House floor or the Senate floor for a vote. Now, it doesn't matter, like I said, which bill gets passed, but it's preferable to have the House bill passed. And uh, and then the Senate will then follow suit right with it. Then, of course, once it's passed, it goes to the president, it gets signed, goes into law, and right. then the money is really immaterial when you get down to it. Uh, it's just whatever they'll accept. Uh, like I said, that uh, uh, all the VA has to do is say, hey, we don't have enough money uh, to carry through with all the claims. We need more money, and it will be given to them once it becomes law. That's the main thing. That's the main object right there, to become law. Then the money comes along. Uh, that's what we need to have done. And I say, without the American people, nothing's going to happen. Uh, we got to have the people to... Uh, to interject, the, uh, uh, the people are the voters, and of course the uh, uh, the House and the Senate need those voters. So, so the more that call in, the better the chances are. Right, that's right. right. In the long and short of it. In the more phone calls, the more you call in, the in the more phone calls and letters. Exactly. Gosh, uh, 
Uh, have your dog and cat call in if they can speak a little bit. <laughs> you should um, call every day, too. <laughs> right. You can make phone calls every day, uh, the same call, call every day. Uh, then they'll know that somebody's serious about it all. That's right. Your dog and your cat. Like I, that. I also heard from an organization uh, that they told me in private uh, it, how they deal with the government. is the, the, uh, the government, as far as senators, the representatives goes, that if you call them up, you, you have to be um, you have to be strong, not not like not rude by all means, of course. Oh, no rude. Not, not overly polite though. You have you have to you have to be stern in what you're saying. You have to be um, a- a- exact, almost yeah, demanding. Yeah, you, know, you need to be forceful. Yeah, and uh, and and uh, be be uh, somewhat demanding, but still be nice about it. Yeah, because so uh, you know if yeah uh, if you start using foul language. Right. Uh, to your congressman or to your senator, and they'll just hang up. You, you'll right. never hear from them again. Uh, we, but you need to be forceful. Yes. So I, have a, I have a question, John. Um, is, is this bill, if it pass, if these bills, if they pass, are are they going to be? Are they going to benefit the children of Agent Orange victims? All right. It it could lead to the uh, to benefiting the uh, uh, you're pro- you're talking about second and third generation children yes. of, uh, uh, of Vietnam veterans. It could lead towards that. All right. Now, since you brought that up uh, about children, uh, mm-hmm. there there are two other bills uh, that are in the legislation right now. They are known as the Toxic Exposure Research Act. Uh, it's House Bill uh, HR. 1769 and also Senate Bill 901. Both of them are titled the uh, Toxic Exposure Research uh, Act. Now, what that means, uh, it's researching, they're asking for uh, research into uh, various types of uh, not just herbicides, but all types of, all types of uh, toxic chemicals that veterans uh, of uh, and also uh, uh, children of veterans have been exposed to, so it's it's kind of like a catch-all uh, so, uh, sort of uh, 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 nomenclature for the bills, and it could mean Asian Orange, it could mean any kind of other herbicide, it could mean uh, radiation, uh, it could mean most anything when it comes to toxic exposure. Uh, now. The way we have heard it uh, through the grapevine is that it's going to be more meaningful towards uh, a herbicide uh, uh, herbicide exposure. Now, if we take herbicide exposure, uh, we can throw Asian orange into that, Asian white, Asian green, Asian purple. We can throw all the rainbow colors right into that to include anything that would have to do with uh, uh, sarin gas, radiation, you name it. Uh, so, so this here is in the making right now, and uh, uh, if any one of those two bills should happen to get passed, then there'll be uh, research done. Now, you know what research means. Research could take months, could take years, could take a generation uh, before any research is done. And uh, now, what they do with a lot of research is first they're going to research various countries, they're going to research various, various kinds of toxic chemicals, they're going to research uh, uh, how many people over how many years, uh, and and also what uh, may come in the future. So uh, uh, this is a these are a couple of good bills, but if the Asian Orange bills get passed. The ones I mentioned previously, if they get passed, they can lead towards other things for second and third generation children. Because once they get passed, then it is making note that it is very possible that uh, the uh, Agent Orange had been passed on to uh, children of Vietnam veterans. And, uh, and they they'll have a hard time uh, denying that fact. Right. They they almost have to admit it. Right. Right. It's making an admission is what they're yeah, doing. Right. They're actually admitting that yes, there there is a problem, and that the uh, uh, the Blue Water Navy was exposed. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. 
And uh, uh, says the Blue Water Navy is the big fight. And this goes back, oh gosh, it goes way, way back uh, uh, to uh, uh, 1991 when the uh, original Agent Orange Act was passed. Mm-hmm. Uh, that awarded uh, benefits to everyone who was connected with Vietnam. And uh, uh, how that how that worked is they call it the territory of Vietnam, uh, and uh, uh, not necessarily uh, land mass. Okay, uh, the territories of Vietnam also included uh, the waters of Vietnam, which extends out 12 miles from from the land mass or from the beaches of Vietnam, mm-hmm. 12 miles out to sea. Uh, which is considered part of the territory of the Republic of Vietnam, just like uh, the United States. Uh, our territorial limits are also 12 miles out to sea from our from our mainland. Sure. Same thing applies to just about every country that has a sea that, that has a sea coast, and uh, uh, where they uh, uh, the designation is 12 miles. So, uh, what happened way back when? is uh, uh, the uh, VA disputes the uh, territorial limits. They consider territorial uh, the territorial limits to be on land only, and they don't consider it to be at sea. Well, uh, legally, uh, uh, internationally, let's put it internationally, the territorial, ter- ter- territorial limits uh, of any country that is bordered by a uh, by a sea is 12 miles. That's part of their property, so to speak. 12 yeah. miles at sea. So, but the VA has denied this fact. Okay. Uh, now, the only way to make it right is by passing a bill. Well, I'm, and I'm glad it will have no choice. I'm glad that you brought that up because since our conversation, which I, I was trying to think of, I think it was a couple of years ago, a year and a half. Uh, but at any rate, I I talked to my father a little more, who who was a merchant marine during Vietnam, okay. and and um, he brought over, you know, all kinds of different stuff, ammo, ammunition, and you know, food and just all kinds of supplies. And I I talked to him a little bit more about you know chemicals and such. And he's the type of uh, of man that he doesn't like to talk about a lot of stuff that happened. So he he, he kind of just avoided the whole, you know, that whole topic. So, but I, I'm I'm curious on you know what he was exposed to. Well, if he was in the waters of Vietnam, he very well may have been exposed. Yeah. Because ships distill salt water into fresh water. Sure. And this is where the denial comes in with the VA. They say, well, they didn't spray the stuff out in the ocean. Well, this is true. It wasn't sprayed out in the ocean. But it was sprayed on land, and they used, they mixed um, Agent Orange with diesel oil right. to yeah. make it stick to the, uh, uh, to the, to the foliage. Mm-hmm. And then when it would rain, what happens with diesel oil and water? It doesn't mix. It floats, right? Right, right. right. Okay, so it would get into the rivers and it would float out to sea, into the South right, China yeah. Sea. Yep. And hence, what would happen is the ships would distill the fresh or distill the seawater into fresh water. And the thing is that it was a proven fact that the um, the killing agent is known as the dioxin. The chemical dioxin uh, was intensified by the heat of the distill- distillation process, and it intensified it by as much as eight to tenfold. Uh, so it was still in the water. We drank the water. We bathed in it. Our food was cooked in it, and it doesn't matter whether it was a Navy ship or it was a civilian ship. The same principle applied. So it's possible he could have been exposed. Huh. It was within the territorial waters. Interesting. Interesting. Now, I, uh, I wish you'd talk more about it. I know that he had mentioned that he shipped chemicals, like, you know, and he didn't know what were in them, and, you know, like, you know, barrels and whatnot that had, 
you know, the chemical labels. And, and, uh, well, what the barrels Asian Orange was shipped in, uh, oftentimes they, those barrels were disguised. They were marked blue boil, uh, mm-hmm. or they were were marked uh, uh, maybe some other kind of uh, uh, a chemical, such as a degreaser of sorts. Uh, and, or they were may have been sure. marked kerosene, uh, but they had an orange stripe around them, and that denoted what was in that in those barrels that were disguised as something else. The orange stripe denoted that it was Asian orange. If it was if it was a white stripe, it was Asian white. If it was That's a purple stripe, it was purple, and so forth, known as the rainbow colors. Right. Wow. And that was recognized. I'm gonna I'm gonna just have to drill them some more. I'm gonna have to make them open up a little bit more. <laughs> well, that would be nice if you can manage to do that. Uh, you know, oh, this, uh, asking were, were there any painted stripes around those barrels? Right. And they remember that. Right. Right. Absolutely. And, uh, and there's a lot of those uh, uh, a lot of Asian orange and and the other rainbow herbicides were transported by civilian ships. Uh, however, uh, sometimes they were offloaded. Maybe uh, maybe they were picked up in San Francisco, for instance, and then transported to uh, Pearl Harbor. Mm-hmm. And in Pearl Harbor, they were put on board Navy ships, or they were transported to Guam and sure. then put on board Navy ships. And uh, uh, I've got evidence of uh, uh, Agent Orange and Agent White being transported on board U.S. naval ships. I've got photographs of it. And uh, uh, and I and uh, I can prove I can prove that with the photographs I have. Sure, I remember I remember you ref- you saying that before on the show. Yeah. yeah, right. Although the Department of Defense, Department of the Navy, uh, denies this fact, but hey, pictures don't lie. And uh, oh, no. uh, I've, I, you know, and, and there have been guys that have told me that they've seen this stuff on the ships. Uh, and uh, sometimes in a storm, the barrels would break loose. They would break, uh, split open, and they'd have to stuff a wash the main decks. They'd have to clean it up, and they said it right. stunk. It smelled like fertilizer. And uh, uh, and when they would get it on their skin, it would burn them. And that's what happens with it. And uh, so as in the process of cleaning it up off, off the decks of the ships uh, when it would get damaged. Or, you know, when they're offloading the stuff, you know, sometimes uh, forklift drivers aren't too kind, and they puncture a barrel, and the stuff gets spilled all over the place. So, But it was it was stored in many, many different places. Uh, Pearl Harbor, Guam, uh, Okinawa, uh, different different places in the Philippines, you name it, it was stored in different different areas. And mm-hmm. then it was, had to get to Vietnam somehow, and yeah. it wasn't always by civilian ships. Yeah, well, that's what I'm thinking. And 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 having listened to some of the stories that he's told me, I and, and uh, like I said, I'm going to drill him some more because I, I I guarantee it. I guarantee that he he uh, you know un- unknowingly obviously shipped shipped that stuff over there. Yeah, probably. He, he, he was there the last couple well, of years. Have- you know, just ask him if he knows if he knew of any uh, any of those barrels had stri- uh, painted stripes around or around, will. Either around them or around the or around the bulk of the barrel, and uh, will. that will give you an answer right there. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that is beginning to happen uh, on May fifteenth. Now this here is an important issue coming up May fifteenth. There's going to be a Senate hearing, uh, and the. Uh, it's going to be hearing. It's going to be a hearing on the uh, Senate Bill S six eight one, and uh, uh, and it's being put on by a military uh, veterans advocacy group, which is uh, a group for the Blue Water Navy, and it is being sponsored by John Wells, who's a, who's an attorney and a retired Navy commander. Uh, he is going to be presenting evidence to the Senate in the Senate hearing of uh, of why we should have the have the bill passed and uh, this man has really dug deep into a lot of a lot of information 
and uh, and he's going to present them uh, bona fide evidence that will be hard to dispute. Uh, he's got uh, he's got testimonials. Uh, he's got uh, all the evidence necessary uh, that the stuff was in fact uh, uh, harmful. He's got the IOM reports. He's got the Australian uh, the Australian uh, Veterans Affairs reports uh, to present to con- to the Senate. Uh, uh, literally everything. He's he he does have absolute uh, proof that the Asian orange was not only harmful, but it was illegally used, and it should have not never been used for one thing. And uh, uh, I don't know how the Senate could possibly dispute uh, what he's going to present to them, uh, and that's going to ha- that's going to happen May fifteenth. Uh, what would help out uh, uh, Commander Wells would be to have uh, the general public call their senators prior to May 15th. Now, that's only two days, three days away, right. uh, and urge them to uh, uh, listen to what's going to take place in, in the uh, Senate hearing and uh, and also what uh, Commander Wells has got to say about all of this. Uh, this would be uh, a big plus uh, if if the people would chime in in the next three days and urge their senators to pay attention to what's going to happen in the Senate hearings on May fifteenth and listen to and listen to the uh, uh, the proof, the evidence that's going to be presented by Commander Wells. Uh, this would be a big, big plus if we can get enough people to jump on this in the next three days and do this and make the phone calls uh, to their senators about it. And all they have to do is mention the Senate, the, the Senate uh, uh, hearings on uh, the Senate Bill uh, S six eight one. That's all they need to mention to that senator. To listen to the uh, uh, the evidence that's going to be presented that day on May 15th, and uh, hopefully that will uh, open up some ears with uh, with the senators. Uh, I can't I can't stress importance enough of uh, having uh, uh, people call in about about the Senate hearing on May 15th. I wonder if maybe one of us, Jeff, that were pretty decent with the with the mem. Generator could whip up something real quick with the memes. Sure. I could share a meme, dude, but I am not an artist. No, well, no, just like with some words or something, just something real oh. quick. You know what I mean? That, that we could throw around social media a little bit. Be more than happy to share out. stuff. You, know. you can do that around social media. Uh, another thing uh, you could do is uh, try to get a senator on your show. Oh, that if would that's be awesome. possible. That would be fantastic. Because you can get a senator on your show and and put him on the uh, uh, I don't want to say nail him to a cross, but just <laughs> put him on the line, put him on the line about this. Uh, no, that oh, would be good. That would be real good. It would really be awesome if if you could manage to get a senator on on your show within the next day or so. That would be too bad we're not in an election year. They jump yeah. for the fact. Right. They'd be <laughs> yeah. jumping all over it. <laughs> It'd be no problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if it were an election year, I don't think you'd have any trouble getting somebody getting a senator on your show. Mm-hmm. Isn't that the truth? So, uh, but uh, because they really want to say their piece, you know. But right now, they're not too worried about the elections for another what 2016. Uh, a good many senators. Yeah. Because we just had an election year, so they still got some. They they some, the, the other one third have bought themselves a time because uh, uh, some some time before the, another one third of the Senate has to go up before uh, uh, the people again for for re-election. I wonder if we could ever find a if you if you could ever find a, a senator of any state, Chris, to to come on the show. You know, you're up in King Maine, right? 
Yeah, I don't think King and Collins are going to be coming Chris, calling in the show in time. Just, uh, just tell them that it. we have the just tell them that we have a guillotine waiting for them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that might that might work if it was an election year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, that would be a doggone good little point to make, right? Yeah. <laughs> nope. For, for all the uh, listeners who you know who don't believe that calling your representatives has any effect and, and that it doesn't work, believe me, it does. It has a huge impact. And that's depending, what it's, depending it's, depending on the subject. Yeah, depending it, it on does, well, it yeah, they'll use it to to their advantage yeah. if it's something that they yeah. want. Sure. But also if it's well, something that's I can that's give an example that does in fact work. because uh, when we had the last house bill, HR five four three, uh I got on a couple of radio shows, uh and uh oh and we really put the word around. I mean, these were a couple of radio shows, uh, one out in California. There was another out in Washington. There was one in New York. Uh, there was a big one that I did in the state of New Jersey. I did a couple in the state of Pennsylvania, where I'm from. And within two weeks' time, uh, we jumped from 150 co-sponsors for that bill in the House to uh, 357 uh, co-sponsors within two weeks. Huh? That was significant just Over. by talking on the radio about this. Over doubled. So, oh sure, and that became that was 55 percent of the house suddenly jumped from 150 sponsors to to uh, uh, to over three to 357 sponsors in just two weeks' time, just from uh, some radio shows that I was on and John Rossi was on. Wow. It's and, uh, known as pushback. Like and that it definitely jumped. It's effective. The people called in. They called their congressman. Yep. And they demanded that they get, you know, some action on these bills. And it worked. It worked. And oh, that's yeah. what I'm hoping yeah. this show yeah. will help out doing. I've, uh, I've been on several shows uh, oh, the past month, and uh, each time after each show, the numbers jump a little bit. Very good. And, uh, so, yeah. so, uh, so these yeah. radio shows do work. They absolutely do work because we get the people excited. We get the people to call in. We get the people to write letters. Right. And uh, and that's you're, what you're, it takes. You're right because it affect it, it affects them. It affects somebody they know. It affects. You know, that that's what it really boils down yeah. to. It affects, you know, it, it, almost everybody knows somebody that it's affected I mean, by it. If you really think about it, we're talking about the uh, the poisoning of the entire, well, the military of the time, and mm-hmm. we're talking about the government taking responsibility and acknowledging it and doing something mm-hmm. about it. And that's mm-hmm. what we're trying to do: get a pressure applied. Right. Well, we we need to. Uh, well, uh, government needs to have needs to be accountable, and. Uh, and, and that's the big thing is is taking accountability for the actions that have happened all these many years back. I and mean, we're going back all the way uh, to what 1962 when all this uh, when Agent Orange was first approved to be used uh, by President Kennedy, who was lied to uh, that it was uh, he was lied to by the Monsanto Corporation that it wasn't harmful, and uh, until he found out differently. And he wanted to stop the war. He also wanted to stop buying the product. And, uh, you know, what can I say? Several months later, he died. He's, he's dead. Right. Right. That's a, that's a whole other show. Dollars <laughs> lost. So I let the people make their own mind up on something like that. Fair uh, enough. I've made, yeah. So, but, uh, you know, th- things happen. Things happen, and uh, and the, the people are the ones who can make things happen. They can make this happen. And we just need them to do the call-ins. We need them to write the letters. Without them, nothing's going to happen. And but I'll tell you, uh, veterans who are infected with Agent Orange are dying at a rate of 400 a week. Now this wow. includes uh, not just Navy, but includes all branches of service. 
That's right. a my, lot of my, guys. Right. My from uncle. This. My uncle was in the Marines <clears throat> in Vietnam, and he died from cancer from Agent Orange in eighty six, I believe, eighty six or eighty seven. I think it was. <clears throat> So it didn't. Uh, he 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 found out he had cancer, and within, I think a year, year. I don't even think he made it two years after he found out. You know, so it's, it's, um, it's, he had, it he, took thirty he, years to he catch up bad. to me. Yeah, and, yeah. and it all depends on the person's immune system and their lifestyle and so forth. Sure. Uh, yep. yep. You know, like uh, I drank the stuff. Uh, it was in my water on board ship. Uh, but those guys that were on land, the army and the marines. They got sprayed with it. Their clothing yep. was drenched with it. Yep. Uh, the uh, controller general of uh, of the United States, uh, way back when, uh, sent out a directive to uh, Admiral Zumwalt, who was in charge of Operation Ranch Hand, and uh, uh, and he he wrote a directive stating that uh, all commanding officers of uh, uh, of all branches of service who uh, uh, are to instruct their men to change their clothes once a day, take a shower once a day. Well, you know, that's all well and good. Maybe that's good for guys who are on board a ship, which, you know, we can do that. However, you take a Marine or you take a guy in the Army, and they're out there grunting around uh, in the jungles, getting shot at and dodging bullets. How in the hell did they take a shower and change exactly. clothes every day? <clears throat> they couldn't, no. so... And uh, and they're and they're living in that stuff, uh, and they're finding pools of water, putting their purifying pills in there, and the water is drenched with Asian orange, uh, uh, as well, drinking it. But their clothing was saturated with it. You know, they can't take a shower right in the middle and say, "Hey, hey, Viet guy, hey, Viet Cong guy out there, you know, stop shooting while I go take a shower and take and change my clothes." <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. That's, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> Nothing but BS, in my opinion. Yep, absolutely. So you know, uh, in a way, in a way, us guys at sea in the Navy, we we were a little bit lucky. You know, we could take our shower. Uh, but the thing is, our food was being cooked in the stuff. We we showered in it. It was in our water to shower in, so we got it on our skin too. Uh, just that we didn't know it like like the like the guys out in the field did. And uh, I, I, I talked to a, a vet not long ago, uh, saying, you know, his uh, uh, his feet would burn like as if they were on fire because his boots were drenched and the oh, socks were drenched. In orange. Yeah. Take his socks off, and they was his, his feet were all blistered. Uh, you know, uh, what do you do about that? You can't. There's nothing you can do. You put some ointment on your feet, uh, or their arms are all blistered because their shirts. The, the the clothing was was saturated in the stuff because they were sprayed with it. They crawled through it. Granted, uh, you know uh, it did save it did save combat lives. All right, the enemy couldn't hide. Uh, it was sprayed on their food supply, so they didn't they they uh, didn't have the food that they really wanted. Uh, uh, the jungles were defoliated. The forests. The tall grass that was eight feet tall, they couldn't hide in because it didn't exist anymore. It, it had died away uh, from using the herbicides. So it saved combat lives. All right. Uh, 57,227 men died in combat operations. And uh, But how many died from Asian orange exposure who weren't in Vietnam? On land, over a million. They don't over think about million. tomorrow. They they just care about the present and uh, they they don't care about the consequences long term. They just want to get right. It. It's That's really right. yeah. disturbing. Yeah. It's a nightmare. It's it's a big nightmare, and it's all about the doggone money. That's yep. that's the sad part of it. It's all about the damn dollar bill. Excuse my French. No, 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 no. Oh, that's but, okay on the show. <laughs> no, but it is. It's all about the talk on money. It is. No, yeah, it is. You're, right. Right. You're 100% Park right. With. So say, say a, a bill gets passed and it goes to the president. 
could he line item veto the parts that would conflict with uh, Monsanto's interest? Uh, probably not. Uh, see, let's see, when was it? It was about, uh, I think it was two years ago. Yeah, I believe it was two years ago. Uh, the uh, Congress passed the Monsanto Protection Act. Now, <laughs> uh, so uh, uh, I, I guess that's because uh, most of the congressmen were in Monsanto's pocket, and probably most of them still are. Right. Uh, but anyway, they passed the Monsanto Protection Act. That was about two years ago. Uh, I found out about the day before I was in Lancaster, PA, uh, conducting a rally uh, of about 500 people that I had uh, listening to me talk. And uh, so I brought this up. Uh, the uh, That same day that they passed the Monsanto Protection Act, the Senate went to the Congress and said, no way, we will not approve of the passage of of uh, the Monsanto Act. So the Monsanto Act in the Congress died because the Senate was not going to vote on it. So it could not become law. And uh, uh, it's doubtful that the president would have signed it, but then, hey, you never know. Uh, you know, maybe Monsanto had the president in, the, in, the, in their pocket too. Uh, but anyway, uh, when I told them that, you could hear a dead silence. You know, it, it was like like as if they were doomed. Yeah. Uh, but I brought up the fact that the Senate disapproved of it and said they will not support the Congress on that act, and the bill died. Hmm. You couldn't imagine the roar and the jumping and up and down and the hollering and shouting and the clapping and the hugging that went on around that over 500 people. You know, when I brought up the other fact that the, the bill was killed, uh, that that uh, Monsanto did not get their way. Mm. About there, there have been other talks about trying to protect Monsanto through the Congress, uh, but uh, so far it hasn't happened. I don't think it will, uh, because there's too much now going on with all the GMOs, which I'm sure you're very familiar about, and it's become in the national. Uh, national, not only a national event, but now it's international. Uh, right. Monsanto has actually been banded from nearly all of Europe, and they're slowly being banded here in this country. Yep. Very slowly. And, uh, they're beginning to label uh, food products now. Yeah. Uh, are they laced with GMOs? That's what I'd like to see. Yeah. And uh, but it's slowly coming about. Uh, there's a big movement on it, and it's uh, you know we're not talking just a handful growing. of people. We're millions and millions of people who are involved in this GMO stuff. It's growing. It is. It's, people it's are growing, and, growing in leaps and bounds. Yes, it is. And there are two people that I know that can be credited for the interaction of uh, uh, GMOs, and that's uh, Kelly Derricks and Heather Bowser. Uh, these two women, uh, they are known as second-generation Asian Orange, and uh, they uh, they have started a movement that has grown in leaps and bounds with millions of people over the past few years. Yep, uh, they, they are they are uh, these two women are founders of the uh, Children of the Viet- Vietnam Veterans Health Alliance. Uh, 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 they can be found online. All someone's got to do is just uh, uh, write, uh, go to their website by uh, uh, looking up uh, Children of the Vietnam Veterans Health Alliance, and they can go right to their website. Yeah, and C- they can even join C- their movement if they like. C-O-V-V-H-A.net. <clears throat> That's correct. Yep. And uh, But the, they have started this movement uh, some years ago, and it has grown. I mean, it, it is huge in numbers today. Actually, I bought a T-shirt from them back about a year ago. It's awesome. Okay. Yeah, well, it's, uh, so the, one of the women only lives about an hour away from me, Kelly. She lives just about an hour drive from me. Yep. And uh, yep. Heather, she lives in Ohio. 
Yep. And sure. I, I have to admire these two women uh, of what they have done uh, to start that kind of a movement against a major corporation. And yep. these women have been threatened more times than oh, not. They have. They've done it. They've done a hell of a job. They have. I've, yeah, I've talked to Kelly on a couple of occasions. I've never talked to Heather, but but absolutely, they're uh, troopers. Oh, I, I admired both of them. I know both of them very well. We're personal friends. So I, I I see Kelly from time to time because she she lives in Langhorne, PA, and I live in Media, PA, and only about an hour's drive to her house. And uh, uh, but she has been very sick lately, and uh, yeah. she takes more pills. She takes more pills in a day than I do, and I can't imagine anybody taking more than 17 pills a day like I have to take to stay alive. Yeah. Oof. All, but, all, uh, all from second generation Agent Orange, correct? That's right. Yeah, they're second generation. And, of course, the uh, uh, Heather, of course, has children. Kelly doesn't. Uh, and I know Heather does worry about her children. Uh, so far, they've been pretty good health. And they're... Uh, uh, they're almost teenagers, both of her boys. Nicest two kids you ever want to know. Mm. And uh, like, uh, you know, I, I feel sorry for uh, for for some of your some of the children who are already, you know, like in their twenties and maybe thirties. Uh, uh, men and women who are afraid to get married, afraid to have children of their own that they may pass on to them as well. And uh, uh, I know it's been in the back of the minds of uh, of a lot of the, a lot of kids who are you know marriage age by now. Um, you know, I've got my two children; they're in their thirties, and neither one of them are married. And uh, and both of them had birth defects. They were minor, uh, considering to what they could what could have been, uh, and they were corrected with uh, with surgeries. And which right now they're very good. They're they're. Uh, they're in good health, both of them, and they're both successful in their jobs. Uh, I like nothing better than to have some grandchildren, but uh, I can't get either one of them married off. (laughs) 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 But, but, uh, but anyway, uh, so, but they, you know, they have their own life, and they've got excellent jobs, and and they know what the score is. They know about me. Uh, they know how I, how sick I have been, and they also know how my wife has had to take care of me sometimes like a baby. And uh, uh, you can't imagine the screaming pain sessions I have had uh, with with some of my cancers. And my surgeries. In fact, I just had surgery uh, uh, a week ago today. I had a surgery, had uh, a surgery done, and I'm just now recovering from that. Wow. So, uh, but all this is, uh, I can, I can thank my government for it. I can thank my government for, uh, uh, for killing me. I just haven't died yet. Sure. Wow. And like I said, I'm 79. Why am I still here? I, I yeah. shouldn't be, according to VA statistics. I should have died 10 years ago because of Agent Orange. That's powerful, it. But uh, it's uh, uh, now there's uh, I get statistics every once in a while, and uh, and I can't find anybody who's still alive past the age of 70, 72, 73 years old. Uh, who's infected with Agent Orange? Wow. Darn few, very few of us. And uh, like, uh, I met with a congressman uh, oh about a year ago uh, in Philadelphia, Congressman Fatal, uh, that's who it is. And uh, uh, he told me he says the reason why I'm still around is because the man upstairs has got a uh, is looking after me because of a mission that I have, and that mission is to get these bills passed. And well, I kind of believe, I kind of believe that. I would, I would, I would believe that, John. Yeah. But then he told me, 
He says, I complete this mission. He says, and I'll find another one to get myself heavily involved in. So God's going to have to keep me around to, uh, to uh, get through that mission as well. Well, I like the way he put that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe I'll live to be a hundred, and uh, I've told my wife. I said, you know, if I live to be a hundred, make sure the president knows because when you when you turn a hundred, you get a birthday card from the president. <laughs> uh, who knows? Who knows? I'm stubborn enough to hang around that long. That's only that's no that's only what uh, twenty one more years from now. Oh, oh. <laughs> But, uh, hey, I've got a stubborn streak in me. I don't let anything get me down. I might be sick as a dog sometimes, but I still write for the newspapers, and I say my piece. I've been published 43 times. This is my 28th radio talk show. And, uh, you know, and uh, so, but that's what I do. I'm a pain in the ass in Congress. In, in Congress. They don't like me. I don't want them to like me. I just want them to do their job. Uh, I have presented documents to senators and congressmen alike, uh, documents I'm not supposed to have, and they want to know where I get them. And I tell them, well, if you want to know that information, take me up before a uh, a hearing committee. I'll take the Fifth Amendment. You throw me in jail, and I guarantee your name is mud, and you'll never be a congressman or a senator again. And I say this right straight to their face. I don't care. I call their bluff, so they shut up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, they can't do anything to me. I got this little blue book that I can wave in front of them called the Constitution of the United States. How? My right. I'm a speech. Mm-hmm. As long as I don't lie. Mm-hmm. And uh, so everything I, I, I talk about, I can prove. If Absolutely. I couldn't prove it, I wouldn't see it. That's right. That's right. John, we're uh, we're going to be wrapping up here. Um, anything else you want to you want to get out before we before we go? Any other plugs? Uh, well, I'd just I'd like to replug what I plugged already. Uh, you know, ask please. the American people to call their congressmen, call their senators. And have them uh, co-sponsor the congressman to co-sponsor the House Bill HR 969, and the senators sponsor uh, the Senate Bill uh, 681. There you go. And and so with that, that down. Uh, with that, uh, if you uh, are done with me, then we're good. <laughs> well, we're never quite done with you. We could probably go on for. For for a very long time, so sure we could. We gotta we gotta wrap up at some point, but all right, John, you're a, a true hero. I appreciate hearing everything you have to say. Well, I don't I don't look at myself as a hero. There there's other there, there's other heroes out there. I think who deserve that name more than I do. Well, you're all heroes, believe me. Yeah, and uh, and Kelly is as well, and. And she, you know, she slaves over that computer tr- on on this activism. Every moment oh, she's tell awake. Me and... Oh yeah, oh yeah. She's quite a gal. Okay. I love her to death. Yeah. No. I appreciate Definitely. it. Definitely. Hey, well, I appreciate you guys having me on your show. It it really means a lot to me, and and uh, and it's going to mean it means a lot to a lot of veterans out there. You know, I I can't say anything, say anything bad about you guys. You're you're uh, you, you guys are the heroes, as far as I'm concerned. You're putting the word out. Well, it's, uh, mm-hmm. That's an that's, what, that's no no John. That's yeah, it is. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, again, uh, the last ones, of course, have died over the past four years. Uh, we've got uh, a House bill and a Senate bill. A uh, House bill is uh, H.R. 969, or, uh, yeah, yeah, 969. And uh, the Senate bill is uh, S-681. Uh, both of those bills are titled uh, the uh, Blue Water Navy Vietnam Veterans Agent Orange Act. 
um, uh, the uh, Senate bill is piggybacking the uh, uh, House bill. Okay. And uh, uh, presently, uh, uh, we have we have uh, 218 congressmen on board with the House bill, and I believe we have uh, eight senators on board with the uh, Senate bill. Uh, the reason why we don't have a lot of senators on board is they're waiting for the CBO. Uh, that's the budget. And once the budget comes about, once the uh, 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 budget office uh, assigns a dollar number, then uh, we'll see how many senators come on board. Mm -hmm. uh, last time, the last bill that was in the House, that one failed. That was uh, H.R. 543, and uh, and it failed last year um, because of the money. It's all about the dollar bill. It's not about the veteran. It's about the it's about the doggone money. And uh, I always say, what's a veteran's life worth? Uh, is it worth a dollar? Or is it worth a million dollars? I don't know. You tell me. Uh, but anyway, uh, the last time the CBO. Uh, uh, score, what they call a score, uh, which is a dollar dollar figure, was uh, $2.74 billion to take care of uh, Vietnam veterans who, were, who are known as Blue Water Navy. Uh, Blue Water Navy uh, represents sailors who were never on land, but only at sea within the 12-mile limit of Vietnam, who still came down with Agent Orange infection. And uh, of which the VA likes to deny that fact. I see. So this, so this bill is specific for that. Yeah. Well, that the uh, Institute of Medicine, we, better known as the IOM, has proven differently, but still, in all, the VA uh, continues to deny the yeah. facts. Sure. Uh, and as, and like I say, and, and it was as far as uh, Congress goes, it's all about the money. Oh. Well. Yeah. $2.74 billion was uh, considered too much money spread out over roughly eight years or Wow, wow, wow. Uh, how are you feeling, John, the last time we talked? I mean, well, uh, things have gotten a little bit worse since the last time we talked. Uh, like I said, uh, at that time I was working on my fourth cancer. Now I'm working on my fifth. So that's that's what that's uh, what I was thinking, and I apologize that I, I I didn't recall, but I thought I thought you know, that that was one John, more. That that John, was one more. I I got to get you hooked up with Sherry Edwards. I really do. She's, okay. She, she's helped you out. She's helped out a lot of people with Agent Orange. Yeah, well, I've got my disability for it, but, uh, you know, what can I say? I'd rather have my health than all that money. Yeah. 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 Wise word. Yeah, if they had a way to give me back my health, they can have it all back. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I hear you there. Well, so, uh, so I'm not I'm not the only one involved in all this stuff, you know. There's there's thousands of other guys out there uh, worse shape than I am. At least ways I'm not pushing daisies yeah. yet. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I've heard still, some, still putting up heard some horrible stories. Oh yeah, they they just keep coming in. So, I mean, is there is there anything positive on the uh on the horizon? Any any potential good news? Well, yeah, for uh there there's some good stuff coming around. Uh, uh we've got some good people working working for us. Uh I don't know if you know him uh or not, uh, Commander uh, uh John Wells. Uh, he's a retired Navy commander and, and an attorney. He's back and forth to Washington DC all the time. Uh he's uh he represents the Blue Water Navy Association. Uh and the head of that association is John Rossi. He lives out in Colorado, and he's uh, probably in worse shape than I am. Uh, John Rossi is anyway. Uh, Commander Wells, uh, he's he's been uh, 
He's been hoofing it back and forth to uh, D.C., talking to senators and congressmen, and uh, and also to the uh, uh, CBO reps. Uh, CBO, that's the uh, Congressional uh, Budget Office, uh, trying to get some figures together that would be acceptable to Congress and to the Senate uh, in order to pass a bill. Uh, we've been making a little bit of progress so far. Uh, how much further it will go, we, we don't know. Uh, things are still up in the air. Uh, a good positive thing is we now have two new bills. Uh, they won't get to talk to the senator or the congressman, but uh, they will talk to an aide. Sure. And, uh, and all they have to do is refer the same thing on to the senator uh, to pass the Senate bill, which is S-681. And, uh, and that word will get to them much more quicker that way than um, than as if they called the local office, but either way will 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 be a big help. And uh, and the phone call should be followed up with a handwritten letter. Uh, senators and congressmen like handwritten letters, and uh, and it doesn't have to be anything long and drawn out. Just something brief, short and sweet, you know, to uh, uh, to work on the bills, to become co-sponsors. To support so, the bills, so, and so you support. Yeah. this is what we need, and we need the. Uh, without the American people, nothing's going to happen. So we need the American people to do this. This puts pressure on, and and the more people that respond, uh, the better our chances are in getting these bills uh, out of the committee and sent to the House floor or the Senate floor for a vote. Now, it doesn't matter, like I said, which bill gets passed, but it's preferable to have the House bill passed. And uh, and then the Senate will then follow suit right with it. Then, of course, once it's passed, it goes to the President, it gets signed, goes into law, and right. then the money is really immaterial when you get down to it. Uh, it's just whatever they'll accept. Uh, like I said, that uh, uh, all the VA has to do is say, hey, we don't have enough money uh, to carry through with all the claims. We need more money, and it will be given to them once it becomes law. That's the main thing. That's the main object right there, to become law. Then the money comes along. Uh, that's what we need to have done. And I say, without the American people, nothing's going to happen. Uh, we got to have the people to... Uh, to interject, the, uh, uh, the people are the voters, and of course the uh, uh, the House and the Senate need those voters. So, so the more that call in, the better the chances are. Right, that's right. Uh, in the long and short of it. In the more phone calls, the more you call in, the in the more phone calls and letters. Exactly. Gosh. Uh, uh, have your dog and cat call in if they can speak a little bit. <laughs> you should call every day, too. <laughs> right. You can make phone calls every day, uh, the same call, call every day. Uh, then they'll know it's somebody serious about it all. That's okay, right. Your dog and your cat. Like I, that. I also heard from an organization uh, that they told me in private uh, how they deal with the government. We have, uh, like I said, uh, uh, we got the two House bills, H.R. 969 and the Senate Bill 681. Uh, both bills are titled the Blue Water Navy Vietnam Veterans Agent Armed Act. Uh, and uh, both of these bills were introduced in March of 2015 and uh, 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 to their respective uh, VA legislative committees, um, uh, both the House and the Senate each have their own legislative committee uh, that works with the VA. So uh, uh, it wouldn't matter which one of these bills get passed. Uh, it's immaterial in, in, in the, some respect. We prefer that the House bill gets passed, because if the House bill gets passed, chances are the Senate will approve it, and then the President will then go ahead and sign it into law. Uh, quick, and, quick question for you. John, um, for for any of our listeners, any of the any of the listeners that uh, you know feel moved and want to want to do something and help, what can they do? I mean, calling the senators, or, um, okay, you know, emails they, and, and whatnot. What 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 can people do? 
All right, what the listeners can do, what the American people as a whole can do, really, is to call their congressman, their district congressman, in, their, in the, wherever they live. They, they can look up their district congressman very easily in the phone book. Uh, they can give him a telephone call and ask the congressman to, uh, uh, to please, they have to be nice, of course, to please uh, uh, co-sponsor the House bill, which is H.R. 969. And uh, that's all they need to ask their congressman. And the best way to call them would be their D.C. office. They, sometimes if they call their local office uh, in their district, not all the time does the word get to the congressman. Okay. But if they call the D.C. office, then the word will uh, – more chances of him getting that information from, from their constituents. Uh, and they can, look, they can look up that phone number online under their congressman's name and get the D.C. office. True. The other thing they want to do as well is also write him a letter, a nice letter, uh, asking him, to, him or her uh, to support the House bill. And uh, and name the House bill, which is H.R. 969. They'll know what that is. Mm -hmm. Likewise with the Senate. Call their senator. And the best place to call them is also the D.C. office. Though They can call the home office if they so please. Uh, usually it's a toll-free number by calling the D.C. office. Okay. And, uh, uh, and all they have to do is ask that senator or so, uh, in eight years, none of us will be left to worry about anyway. Uh, I'm 79 years old. I'm one of the oldest known Vietnam veterans still living. And I sometimes ask myself every day why. Uh, but uh, I think the man upstairs has got something in store for me, such as completing this mission I am on. Yeah. There you go. Uh, and, uh, but, uh, uh, what uh, John Wells is trying to do is to bring that figure down to maybe $1 billion or less. And, and if that can happen, then uh, uh, just maybe the Congress will pass the bill and perhaps the Senate will come on board and pass their bill as well. Uh, now, see, what you have to know about uh, about dollars and cents when it comes to uh, Congress and the Senate especially to Congress, is that uh, once a CBO score, what they call a score, which is nothing more than dollars, uh, once that is set and it's carved in stone and they pass a bill, uh, it doesn't matter what the, what the dollar could be. It could be one dollar or it could be a billion dollars. Uh, once the bill is passed, then they are, uh, they are committed to continue uh, affording benefits that cost money. And all the VA then has to do is say, we need more money, and the Congress must give it to them. Mm -hmm. uh, so it doesn't matter uh, what the score is, what the CBO score uh, comes out to be. Uh, uh, when they say they need more money, they are given more money, uh, regardless of the original uh, the original dollar figure. So, uh, so, so it doesn't matter whether we get approved for a billion dollars or one dollar. It doesn't make a it doesn't make a hill of beans. The big thing is is to have the bill passed. Right. And that's that's uh, uh, once it's passed, then it becomes law, and then the VA must uh, uh, go along with that law, and. Uh, and if the VA goes to the goes to Congress and say, "Hey, uh, one dollar isn't enough. We need uh, we need uh, you know a billion dollars." Well, then Congress has to give it to them in order to keep the law moving, so that the benefits can be can be awarded accordingly. That's it in a nutshell. Uh, there's more complications than that, but. But that's about the uh, long and short of it in a, uh, in a nutshell, so uh, perhaps the people can better understand of how it works. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. 